food crisis in America, the land of the great, home of the free and the brave. But what is really going on out there? The food crisis is really taking over in all the states and everything else. Welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And today we're going to be discussing the food crisis that is going on. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have probably seen on your news, your local news, wherever you may live, the food banks, the amount of people that are in line waiting for food, the amount of people that need the food. Um, a lot of this all stems back to a lot of people aren't prepared. A lot of people weren't prepared. Now, pre um, uh, Charlie Victor 19, uh, they estimate that 60% of the American population basically, you know, they didn't have any type of a, a disaster kit. They weren't prepared. It really showed after Charlie Victor 19 hit and the amount of people that lost their jobs that didn't have food put up for any type of an emergency situation, not even like Charlie Victor 19, but even for natural disasters or anything else. It really showed how vulnerable that we all were in this country. Now we're all used to seeing all the pictures and everything else of other countries with the famine and the food shortages and people starving and begging for food and everything else. It's not something that you see on the TV or on the news every day in America, happening in America. Now there has always been, you know, the poverty level and everything else. We all know that that's been a thing since the beginning of time. You had some people that had plenty to eat and you had other people that didn't have plenty to eat. A lot of people, I think after Charlie Victor 19 hit and the first round of wiping out the grocery stores and all the food on the shelves and for people that waited too long, when they walked into the store, I'm sure it was a quite the culture shock for them. And the food crisis has a lot to do with a lot of people being out of work. Now, depending on your state, some states may be doing better than others. Like here in Florida, in Central Florida, a lot of it is based on tourism. A lot of the jobs are based on tourism. Now, the tourism is like way down and a lot of people are out of work still. I see every day in my job, more and more people living out of their vehicles with their whole families, kids, parents, they're living in vans, cars, they're parking wherever they can try to park before they're told they have to leave. There's more and more people that are standing on street corners with signs than ever before, ever before. Every red light you get to, there are tons of people out there. You see people out there with their kids. You see people out there begging for anything. And it's a sad thing to see. It really is in this country. Now, four out of 10 Americans, basically over the last months of this whole Charlie Victor 19, when this all hit, you know, they experienced for the first time insecurity in the food that they had in their homes. That's four out of 10 Americans. That's a lot of people. So if you look around, you know, every fourth person 
is probably needing some type of help or struggling very hard. Now, they did do a poll of Americans. Now, I don't know how many people they polled in that particular poll, but 37% of Americans said that they have skipped meals so that there was enough food to go around for the family to make sure that other people in the family could eat. This is America. What is going on? You know, until we can get this whole Charlie Victor 19 under control, nothing's going to change. The government doesn't seem to be budging either way to help put out a stimulus package. I thought it was quite a bad decision on everybody in the government to leave and go on their Thanksgiving break without even trying to pass something. I don't think they should have been allowed to leave. I don't think those people, those people should have to stay there until something is done for the American people. And I don't give a crap if you're an American, if you're a Republican, Democrat, I don't care what you are. We're talking people's lives here, people. And something needs to change. Nobody seems to really want to do anything now. We're all still fighting over the election. Who won? Who didn't win? And the whole nine yards. But something has to give. Or we're going to lose a lot more people. So the moral of this story is really, if you are in a position and you have the ability and you know someone that is struggling as an American, I think it is only the right thing to do to try to help them out especially with the holidays rolling around, and especially if they have kids. Do the right thing. If you have to, put together a meal for them. So maybe they could have a Thanksgiving dinner. Because the food banks are all, you know, they're just, they're overwhelmed. They don't have enough. They get what they get. And within hours, they pass it all out. Look at the huge one they had out in Texas the other day. They passed out 600,000 pounds of food. 25,000 cars went through that line in one day. And there were still people they couldn't serve. What is really going on in this country? Now, I don't mean to make a video on to try to bring people down or anything else, but more of make you aware what's going on around you. Pay attention. Now, I'm not saying that everybody that's standing on a street corner, you got to give them 20 bucks. I'm not saying that. You know, because there are some people out there are just peddlers. They've been out there for years. You can kind of pick and choose. You can tell which ones are the peddlers that have been there for years and the people that are just desperate with families to try to get a meal for their family and kids. And it is so sad that, you know, it's very hard for some people to distinguish between which one is true and which one isn't. Now, in my line of field, I go through the same area every day. I see the same people every day. I know the people that have been out there for years, and I know the people that are new and are hurting. And I have helped out a few here or there. And I kind of go with my gut instinct because I see where they live out of their car. So, being that Thanksgiving is rolling around this coming week, maybe, 
just maybe. If some of you out there know someone, maybe it's friends, anything, maybe give them a helping hand. You could even buy the food and give it to them. Problem is, is do they have a way to cook? It? If they're living out of their vehicle, it's probably going to be pretty tough. So at nighttime, if you are pretty much well set, and say you're a prepper like me and like other people that are out here on YouTube and you've been paying attention, you've been prepping for years, you're good to go. Good for you. You know, I mean, we've all been trying to warn people that this was coming. And obviously, you know, especially as smaller channels, we don't reach the amount of people that maybe some of the larger channels do. And then it all falls back into the balls in your court. We try to make sure that we get the information out there. That's why I'm doing this video on this food crisis, because I think it's important. A lot of you may not think it's important, but it is important. The word needs to get out that people need help. The government isn't helping. The government's never going to help. At least it seems that way at this point in time. And the sad thing is, there's a lot of people that are paying the price for it. And like I said before, it doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat. Well, all Americans, we're all in this together. And I believe that the only way we're going to get around this and get through this is by sticking together. Because if not, with Charlie Victor 19, all the numbers are going up. Food crisis, stores are starting to limit all the products again. They're putting limitations on canned goods. They're putting limitations on product, you know, paper products. They're putting limitations on just about anything. And if you haven't started prepping, you still have time. It might be a little bit more difficult. Now, something else I want to cover real quick. Now let me put my glasses on for this because we all know I need reading glasses. All right. I want to put out a little bit of thing here just on the chance that anybody out there, you know, someone, friends, family, whoever it may be, wherever they do live, that maybe can try to get them some help in a desperate situation. Okay. Now, Get you a pen and paper. Now you can always go back through and watch the video again and put this in here. And I'll try to put this in the description below. Um, I already am in the description below for all you people that don't know this. In the description below, if you don't go in and you look, I give you a breakdown of things that you may want to make sure that you have to help you out. To try to take away some of the, um, the aggravation, the... Uh, what do I need and all this kind of stuff. There's a list that is in the description below of all my videos. All right. So you can click on the description, go down there, scroll through, and there's a broken down list of some of the things that you may want to make sure that you have in case of a pandemic, disaster, loss of job. Any of that all falls under being prepared. As a prepper, you are prepared for anything. That's what you prep for. Because we don't know what the future holds. So what I'm going to give you right now is, if you want, I'll give you a second. Grab a pen and paper. And this is some information that maybe it will help some people out. Like I said, if you know someone or if someone needs help. 
And this comes right from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the USDA. All right. They have a national hunger hotline. This is to connect people to the local food resources, such as meal sites, food banks, and other social services that can help them. You can reach them by calling their toll-free number, 1-866-3-HUNGRY. And you get to speak with a representative. You can also text 9779 with questions that, can turn, that contain a keyword such as food or meals and an automated response will provide resources located near your address or zip code. So that is something that maybe could help some people out in your realm of friends, family, or anything else. And this is a national hotline that will work anywhere here in the United States of America. And it will put you into, by your zip code, it'll put you into where your food banks are, where maybe you could get a hot meal and all the other services that hopefully maybe you do qualify for, which I think if you're out of a job and you're struggling, so you should qualify for them all. But that's just my opinion. I'm not a representative. I'm not a congressperson. I'm not a Senate because if I was, I would be pushing that nobody leaves any office in Washington, D.C. until the job is finished. Because personally, folks, for them to go home for their holiday Thanksgiving meal is bullshit. Sorry for the language, if it does upset you, but it just ticks me right off. I don't like to see people go hungry and the food crisis that is going on is just a cry and shame. So in light, as I did say, with the Thanksgiving rolling around this coming week, if you out there know someone, friends or family, do your part, especially if you're prepared and say it's you're a prepper. Say even if you're a seasoned prepper, you maybe could help out even a couple of people. It's really not going to kill you. Say you have six months of food or more. Some of these preppers out here, you may have a year's worth of food. So to take enough out to give somebody a nice hot meal for Thanksgiving, is that really going to break the bank? I don't think so. So in closing, don't forget, in the description below, I do break down on all my videos. I put it in there. And this way here, you have a template to go by. Some things, you know, you may want to change up, whatever. It's a template. That's all I do is templates to give you a basic idea. And you do with it what you want. You can add and take away. You can, whatever you need to do. But it's to help you take away from the whole part of trying to figure out what it is you need for you and your family to survive in the times that we live in. And let's all just pray to God that this thing passes soon. It's not looking too promising right now, people. But... I'm pretty optimistic there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes you have to dig through that tunnel to find it, but there's always a light. So this is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I hope everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope that everybody stays safe. Do your part. I know a lot of people probably will not be with their friends and family and their large gatherings as we all like to do. And a lot of us miss that and it brings us down. 
But if it's something that helps control Charlie Victor 19, maybe it'll be worth it. Time will tell. Time is all we got. So, until next time, thank you for joining me on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. I hope you all have a great day. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Until next Sunday, I will catch you all on the flip side.